filmsimplified.com. Let's take a look at this image. When you look at the image, you'll notice that the image looks a bit blue. There's a blue cast on the image, caused by the wrong white balance on the camera. Now we need to correct the colors of this image. First, let's amplify the problem to see it in a better way. I'm going to come to saturation and increase saturation. And now you can clearly see the problem here. Everything looks a bit blue. So I'm going to add a new node. And now I'm going to look for an object in the image that should not have any colors. Some objects in your image should not have any colors. Like if there is a white paper, it's just a white paper. There should not be any color information in it. If you have a white sofa and any other colorless object like a gray object, for example. Now in this image, we have this uh, sofa that should be white. And now it looks a bit blue. So I'm going to expand uh, my curves and make sure that I have gang custom curves unchecked. Then I'm going to sample a part of the sofa. So I'm just going to get my color picker, hover over the sofa and click. Now I have these points created for me. It's showing me where this part of the sofa falls on the curves exactly. Why is this important? Let's understand one thing. If any part of your image is without any colors, these three points here, the red point, the green and the blue point that were created for me should be aligned perfectly. If they're aligned, it means that this object does not have any color information in it. So the easiest thing to do is to align the dots and I will automatically balance the colors of my image. I'm going to grab this dot down, bring this one a bit down and bring this one up. Look at the colors now. Look at the before and after. Notice how easy it was to balance my image based on an object that should not have any color in it. Let's try this with an extreme example. Now this image have a big problem with white balance. So I'm just going to expand my curves now. And because we have a paper here, I know that this paper should be white. So I'm going to sample the paper by clicking on it with the color picker. And now I have my three dots here. Notice the extreme difference between the dots now. So I'm going to start by bringing the red down a bit to this point here. And I'm going to get the green up to the same point and get the blue up. Now we managed to balance the paper, but we created another problem. Take a look at the skin tones here. They don't look natural. So now in order to correct this, I'm going to sample the skin tones. Of course, this point is the same point as the one that we created earlier because the colors here are very close to the original colors of the paper. So Da Vinci gave us the same point as a reference again. Now with skin tones, usually uh, skin tones looks a bit reddish. So the red channel should be the highest channel, then green should be less and uh, blue should be way down. So the first thing I'll notice here is that the green and the blue channels are identical, which is a problem. So I'm going to hold this point in the blue channel and pull it down. Yeah, this looks more natural. Now, why didn't I do this correction in a different node? So the first node will deal with the paper and the second node will deal with the skin tones. The answer is placeholders. When we're doing it on the same curve, these points here, the points that corrected the paper originally, now act as placeholders. So even though that I'm changing uh, the color of the skin tone here, I am not affecting the colors of the paper. You can see if I bring it all the way down or bring it all the way up, I'm not changing the colors of the paper. So I'm just going to bring the uh, blue channel down and the green down a bit. Yeah, this looks much better. Let's take a look at the original image and this one. The last thing I'll notice here is that her hair looks very red in an unnatural way. So I'm just going to sample the hair again. And these are the three points that uh, represents the hair on the curve. And now I'm going to bring the red slider a bit down. Great. And now let's increase the saturation to see our image. This is before and this is after. Even though this image looks a bit hard to correct, it was easy to correct in DaVinci Resolve because of our ability to sample parts of the image and see exactly where they fall on curves. Let's take a look at another hard example. When you look at this image, there is a real problem with the white balance again. So let's expand curves. And now I'm going to sample this color here. And because I know that this should be green, it's weird that the highest channel here is red and green is below it. So 
To correct this, I'm going to have to bring the greens up. Okay, so now this is green now. However, I need more contrast in the image to be able to see the image clearly. So when you look at the color green here, you'll notice that some parts are darker than other parts. So I'm going to add contrast. In order to bring down only the uh, shadows without affecting the midtones, I'm going to add a placeholder here to keep this part of green from being pulled down with shadows. So I'm just going to click and now I have a placeholder here. And as long as this point is my placeholder, I can bring this part of the curve down adding a bit more contrast without affecting this part of the image. And the highlight here looks a bit yellow. I need to correct for that also. Remember this is color correction, not color grading. So we need to get the image to look natural. So I'm going to sample also a part of the sky here and notice how the uh, blue is way down. This is the red, this is the green, and this is the blue. I'm just going to pull the blue up. Good. Let's take a look at the original image and this one. I can actually bring this down a bit. Yeah, much better. So this is the original and this is the new one. 